The chartered honor flight to Washington, D.C. gives this group of veterans the opportunity to see monuments and war memorials, but it also gives these men the chance to hear from those who appreciate their service to this country. The one-day trip started early, and with buses loaded for the airport, the Dell City Fire Department formed a ladder arch to see the group off. Motorcyclists formed a Patriot Guard to escort them to the airport. On arrival at the airport in D.C., they were greeted by a volunteer ground crew. It's so important for them to realize because a lot of times they've never had anyone greet them when they came home. Some of them came home in 45, 46 and such and nobody was there to greet them when they came home. And now they just show our appreciation for them. Each veteran is assigned a volunteer guardian to assist them on the day's journey. Former Golden Glove boxer Vincent Valderas couldn't wait to get the tour underway. The whole thing. Just make a big deal out of it. I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. And my partner here, I like him talk a lot. Uniformed service members saluted the veterans as the tour kicked off. First stop, the World War II Memorial. Navy veteran Jess Carr says without today's honor flight, he may never have gotten to see this. If these walls could talk and the names on the walls on the memorial could talk, and we could flush the names in tears. I just wonder how many gallons of tears would be collected from mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, and their children, and the people who wept for them. Carr's assigned guardian was his own son, Steve, a Vietnam vet. Overwhelming. Just, just truly glad to be honored to be here. Because if it wasn't for the veterans, where would we be? We would be without a home. The tour next took the veterans to the Korean and Vietnam memorials. Bert Morphis and his guardian were looking for a specific name on the wall, honoring more than 58,000 who died in Vietnam. It is awe-inspiring to uh, just to realize how many people died to uh, maintain our freedom. The last stop on the tour was Arlington National Cemetery, where the veterans watched the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The ceremony requires viewers to be silent and stand up, and wheelchairs did not stop these men from fulfilling what they see as their duty. I uh, tried to just tried to figure out what was in the minds of those boys doing that at the time, you know because every move was precise and to the point, you know, just so very solemn. Oklahoma Honor Flight veterans depart and return to the state the same day. The schedule is grueling, but the excitement of the journey kept these men going even on the flight home. That's when volunteers surprised the veterans with mail call, letters from school children thanking them for their service. I know that we as United States citizens have much to be proud of, and nothing surpasses your commitment. State Representative Gary Bands organizes the Oklahoma Honor Flights. Bands believes each of these men is a living World War II textbook. This group is symbolic of the group that we're working with at large. We've got about 398 on our waiting list. We took 99 today. <clears throat> it's a very fragile group. The oldest guy on our on our flight today was 96 years old. 31 of them were over 90, <clears throat> and we don't have much time. Thursday's ONR will feature more on this week's honor flight as the veterans share their reflections of serving during World War II. For ONR, I'm Lori Rasmussen.